What is good? We're back. Got a little tripod. Got our guy Austin Abbott over there. We got old Matt Foreman in studio. We're ready to go. 2024 underway. You know, 2023 is over. The season's over, but the content is just getting fired up for 2024. Maybe the best time of the year, huh? Let's go. Need Joe Peterson playing on the panel. We've only just begun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so today we got, uh, obviously the 2023 fantasy season has basically come to a close unless you're a weirdo and play, you know, till week 18. I know um, one of those leagues. And then the, obviously the college season has kind of come to a close. So we're about to get heavy on the rookies and we'll, we'll keep up with, you know, regular dynasty stuff, strategies, startups, values, all that stuff. But, uh, today we're going to take the 2023 rookie class and put it up the 2024 rookie class for our first initial look at, you know, kind of a, we're going to use mock draft style. It's going to be super flex, tight end premium and kind of see where the value lands on these new guys versus last year's class. So I think it'll be a fun exercise. We'll probably do this a few times in the off season to see where things change because we're just really getting super dialed into the rookies now that uh, we're not Sc- scoring season is over. Right, right. Uh, so again, you can check Austin Abbott at Austin Abbott FF, two B's and two T's, and, and you can catch Matt Foreman at Fat Mormon on Twitter. I'm Casey Myers. This is the FFD. Let's get it. 1-1. One, one. I had the uh, the 1-1 one, one here. I'm going CJ Stroud with the 1-1. One, one. Uh, I'm going to read off six picks, and then we'll kind of go back and discuss. So CJ, again, super flex, tight end premium, uh, 1.5. Um, we're going to do this kind of mock draft style. So Stroud was 1-1. One, one. That was mine. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., 1-2. That was Austin. 1-3 was Caleb Williams. 1-4, I took AR-15. 1-5, uh, Bijan, Austin. And then 1-6, uh, May. So at 1-1, one, one, I-, I took Stroud. I don't know if that was spicy or not. It seemed like maybe Matt, you might have thought it was a hair spicy. It just seems like we... we you're not you're not messing it up right there. There's plenty of upside. Uh, he he's one of the he 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 raises everybody around him. Uh, I'm not scared to invest and build around C.J. Stroud and the just the state of quarterbacks <clears throat> in the NFL right now. The ascension of Stroud seems to be very real. And and you know this is a Texans team who has been struggling since the departure of Watson and even some sometimes in there. So for this franchise to be on the up and him raising the level of play that's a, that's a good sign of everything around it the culture looks good uh the oc looks good the head coach looks good uh offensive line can be pretty good when healthy weapons look good weapons look good and and you know like i said they're, they're going to be slowly adding to that and this oc's just getting started too uh bobby slowick so stroud just felt safe reasonable I, and and you know the value i think is is strong and is going to stay strong i think he's probably got the highest floor of any quarterback here yeah so, Austin, hit me with a little bit of why Marvin Harrison Jr. at 1-2, and then uh, we'll kind of go through the room here, and then we'll see if anybody would really switch anything up through the six picks. Yeah, man. Real quick, I think you nailed the 101. I love that Stroud was the first pick. I would have done the same exact thing, so I just, just want to say hats off, man. Love that pick. <laughs> with the 102, so I think this kind of came down to Marvin Harrison Jr., versus Caleb, right? I think that Bijan, according to consensus, would be under underneath them, right? That That's kind of what my opinion is. I think that's what what consensus thinks as well. Um, but I do prefer Marvin Harrison Jr. over Caleb. I think most people would actually rather Caleb, but uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. to me uh, just feels safe. You guys were talking about the safe pick before, and yes, Stroud is safe, but that's exactly how I feel with Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think that Marvin, or sorry, I don't think, I know that Marvin Harrison Jr. is in the conversation to be one of the greatest prospects we have ever seen for a wide receiver right uh, and keyword is prospect right who knows how he's going to pan out in the nfl obviously i think he's going to go on to have a very successful career but as far as prospects go that's all we have i believe marvin harrison jr is truly as safe as it gets so i yeah. i loved taking him here and um i'm just any draft it doesn't matter if it's one quarterback or super flex if i'm on the clock at 101 i am walking away my rookie draft with marvin harrison jr over caleb guys ready Guys, ready. Uh, so one, three. You you had that, Matt. You I took Caleb. Locked I mean, and loaded there. Just right. Does, no other pick makes sense there. Yeah. And you know, if if goes to the Bears, are you upset about the the a landing spot care. there? I don't it care. Ch- where it change your mind? Okay. No. I, okay. Don't, I don't care. Do you think the Bears should take him? 
Oh. I think they probably should to reset the, to reset the clock. Yeah, I think you got to reset. It's all about the money for me at this point. Whether yeah. as, I think Fields can be fine, especially if you yeah. traded and got to haul it. But I think at this point, the yeah. dollars and cents of five years of Caleb Williams. I feel like the haul for Fields is probably not that much less than you're going to get for Caleb. I mean, it's obviously going to be less. Yeah, but it's going to be less. I feel like but. you should at least get a first for Justin Fields. Yeah, sometimes that value gets a little funny, though. You know, when, when sure, sure, uh, somebody's yeah. been in the league for a couple of years, and you know, it might a two and a three or two twos and a three might be more likely than the actual first. But somebody, you know, somebody hey, I could, you know, Seahawks paid two sec two first for Jamal Adams, so anything's <laughs> yeah, possible. That's true. <laughs> it's just getting. It's just like anything. It's getting the right. You know, it's baiting the right person. Yeah. Uh, to to give you the right value. So, uh, and then at four, I took. I took um, I took Anthony Richardson here. I like it. I just thought that I, I went away from the safe and I went with upside. We saw how fast that Anthony Richardson can pile up points, and uh, you know I, that that that's what I want. I want. Uh, it felt like I had to take Stroud over him just because we kind of know we have a, a fairly complete picture at least for a year of what it's going to be. AR is a little more risky here, um, but I think I think you know in choosing from this year's quarterbacks and last year's quarterbacks again, this is super flex. Um, I, I just felt like uh, Anthony Richardson is going to give me the best opportunity week in, week out with the guys left to to put up W's. Um, I think he's he's a, a huge difference maker. So uh, I took Allen Ro or uh, Allen Robinson, uh, <laughs> Anthony Richardson, <laughs> the old AR fifteen, yeah, yeah, Anthony Richardson at uh, at one four. Austin, you you were at one five. You took Bijan. Thoughts there. I think he's probably the most valuable player remaining at this point, right? I kind of had the approach of BPA, and I just feel like you can't go wrong with Bijan at the 105, right? How, like, it almost, I mean, Bijan isn't falling to 105 in any rookie draft. Of course, now we have, you know, we're combining the two classes. So he was the consensus 101 in 2023. So for him to fall to five here, I don't want to necessarily say it felt like a value, but um, it felt like, just again the uh next man up uh at this point uh i, I thought a rich man i i, I kind of thought you were gonna go Bijan over a rich here yeah and the start I, of I last year was for me yeah and and i don't blame you right i love that you went safe initially and then you got risky here right i think we were in week seven or week eight at one point joe burrow had played four more games than anthony richardson he was already done for the year and anthony richardson still had more fantasy points than yeah him. and like that's just the type of upside that you drafted right there at the 104 so right i, I get it i totally understand that pick yeah, and I, you know, I think I think Bijan was was probably the pick there. I guess maybe the thoughts now is is was anybody taking Gibbs over Bijan at this point? Yeah, I guess that would have been the, yeah the very next question. And uh, to me, it's very close to fifty fifty. I think I need to see one more. I don't want to call it like a full year, but even if it's like a you know first four to six games next season, if 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 uh, Jameer Gibbs comes out and he just looks superior. I could understand flip flopping, but right now I'm still holding. I'm still diamond hands. I'm still in. We're still I holding out that, hope uh, that we get a new coaching regime yeah, and a quarterback in Atlanta, right? Too. I think you're getting <laughs> yep. at least. I mean, one that's of the, the only two, issue. Both. Yeah, yeah, that's really the only issue. But right now, I still prefer uh, Bijan over Gibbs. It's very close. I I was talking to Casey about this last night. Where do you have Bijan versus Brees? Oh, Brees. I actually, fellas. I, uh, spoiler, but I was going to talk about this at the end of the pod. I just dropped about 30 minutes ago my 2024 Dynasty startup rankings with rookies included, top 225 players. My number one running back is Brees Hall. Yeah, I nice. think I'm there now, too. I think yep, I'm there. He is. Yeah, and you can you can check that out on Austin's Twitter, at Austin Abbott FF. I haven't looked at any of your ranks, Austin. I know you put out your rookie ranks last week as well, too, but I haven't looked at them. I don't want them to... Uh, I don't want them to. I don't. I don't want them to plague my thoughts. I try to. <laughs> I try to sequester myself from other people's opinions during a rookie evaluation season until I really look at everyone. So I did see you drop what? those last Friday night. You, you don't want to just agree with me and have the most boring podcast ever? Come on, man. <laughs> well, there's there's enough of those already. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so would you you still have Bijan over Gibbs or is it? Yeah. I th yeah. I think. I think what we were talking about last night. I think that just the. Just the Monty is just enough for me to have a thorn in the side of J Gibbs to have him have that upside that I think I think we're I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about Algier, but I don't yeah, really, that 75 yard touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> and, 
You would think if you get a regime change that it's yeah, w- it's way less of a split and and For a quarterback. Sure. That's my thought process so there. It's a little bit of hoping. Yeah, when, when Gibbs has shown you he can be really really good yeah. with the thorn in his side, but if Bijan can just get the type of carries that yeah. he should, I think I think it's Bijan still. Yeah. Um, so it's a little hope there. So you took at one six. You went May. I went May because because of, of the superflex. Mm-hmm. I, you could I could have went Gibbs, but I went I stuck with the quarterback and went with May. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a pretty safe safe pick. I guess I could even argue. Well, now nah, I'm taking Bijan, and I may take Gibbs over May as well. I there, think May so. and Gibbs is probably close. I think. I, I think there's an argument for both. I think I'm going to – if if it's 50-50, which I think it is for me there, I'm going to lean the qu- the quarterback just slightly. Yeah, I could mostly agree with that. I think I'll hit the next couple picks here in a row, but if I had to switch anything up, I, I might I might switch Caleb and, and Marvin Harrison. So well, Caleb would well, go to two. And, Austin's, are, Austin's on record saying he's not leaving any draft without Marvin right. Harrison Jr. If he's, if, he's on, if he's available to take right. him. So. I'm saying for me personally, yeah, I would. For sure. I, I might I swap do, those guys around. I would too. I, then, I think. I think I would. I don't know if I'm quite there with Stroud just quite yet. I mean, I guess you've already seen it in the NFL. So, yeah. like I said, I thought it was a little hot. I thought it was a little spicy initially. Uh, I think it's definitely cooled off. I mean, he's still playing really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's obviously. I don't, it's not a bad pick. I think, yeah. Obviously, but. I'm I'm still gonna lean the just that rushing upside that Caleb has just a little bit over Stroud. I mean, we could be sitting here this time next year and saying Anthony Richardson's should be, should have been the guy anyways. So. Right? Yeah. True. True. Matt, you have Caleb and Stroud in the same tier. I'm assuming, right? But yeah. you give the nod. You give the yeah. nod to Caleb. Yeah. Right. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And then I'm you know I think I think Gibbs like we talked about Gibbs and Bijan could be interchangeable depending on what you like and maybe you even take Gibbs over May. So. Austin, any 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 big movements or any little movements you'd have here at from one one to one six? One six and one seven is is what what I was gonna go yeah. to next, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Pr- so it's so Gibbs I, is it leads off the next one. So go ahead. Mm-hmm. At eight. I was just gonna say I, I agree with you. I I do prefer Jameer Gibbs over Drake May. I've kind of figured out that I'm a little bit lower on Drake May. Uh, initially, I was pretty hot on him, and it, I've cooled down a lot this off season. Um, I I just. I, I, you know, there's a lot of players in this class in the 2024 class that hurt their stock this season, right? Or, or just over the past year, rather, right? Like we have Emeka Buka definitely hurt himself really over the past year or two, literally um, and figuratively. <laughs> yeah, yep. There, there's, there's a lot of guys that I, I could run through right now. Um, I don't really want to spoil a whole lot for the show, but, but Drake May is one of them in my opinion. And uh, you know, hey, I'm rooting for the kid, man. I hope he gets that top to draft cap which which i'm anticipating i think he's going to be the second overall pick i think he's going to yeah. go before marvin harrison jr in the nfl draft right mm-hmm. i'm fully i i, think I, could I don't go either way. Chalk. I think it could go either way i really do it could it could i don't want to say it's chalk because i don't think it is but i yeah right now if i if i had a bet money on it it would be that drake may is the second overall pick in the 2024 nfl I, draft i think the fact that arizona doesn't have the 102 makes it more likely that the one or two will be a quarterback. Mm-hmm. If Arizona was sitting there at two, I think there's a chance that Harrison Jr. could have went. Because I, I mean, Kyler versus May. I mean, I'll I don't, take Kyler. I'm gonna probably stick with Kyler. I already know what he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I have in him. So, but yeah, I think I think May probably does go above him. I mean, shit, we could see another quarterback go before before um, Harrison Jr. comes off the board if the if the pieces end up right. If the draft picks it, align right, yeah, yeah, for sure. See, that's so interesting because if you're the if you're the Cardinals, you can't necessarily trade K- Kyler without the contract, correct? No, you got to get right. the contract up. Yeah, right. So, something similar to the Daniel Jones situation. Mm-hmm. So, it's just something to think about. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, let's. Uh, d- did you have any adjustments? Nope. I, okay. Nope. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. The next set. So, uh, one's picking up at one seven. I took Gibbs at one eight. Austin took Neighbors. At one nine, Matt took Jaden Daniels. At one ten, I took Michael Penix Jr. At one eleven, we got Puka Nakua. And at one twelve, rounding out this round of picks, we got Brock Bowers. Um, so I had Gibbs there. We just we kind of touched on him a little bit. I think you yeah. could sw- swap him up with with Bijan or May there. Uh, so you know, not going to go into great great detail there. Um, how about Malik Neighbors there? Thoughts. Thoughts there? That seems like a layup at this point. You could even argue Gibbs or Neighbors, I guess. Uh, I love I, Neighbors, man. I, I, <laughs> Gibbs. I love Neighbors. Um, I don't have a problem with this. Like, this is 
it's splitting hairs, man. This was a tough draft for a lot of reasons. Uh, I'm cool with flip flopping them. Um, I think I do prefer. I don't know. I, I, I my gut wants to go neighbors, but I'm again, I'm cool with either, man. These are just two great players, mm-hmm. two top tier dynasty assets that you just want to plug into your roster, just hold forever. All right, uh, you took Jaden Daniels there. I at, wish at I would have nine not taken Daniels here. Well, who would you have taken? I should have taken Puka. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I should have taken. Puka. Ah, right. I should have taken Puka at nine instead of Daniels. Okay. But still like the Daniels. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. As the third QB. Yes. Yeah. It's solidly the third QB. Mm-hmm. I think there's a right now class, without wa- class, without right. watching anything. I think I kind of have the three of them in the same tier. Yeah. I mean, I maybe put Caleb just in his own tier, kind of at the top, but. I, yeah. I think definitely. Daniels and May are definitely in the same tier. I don't know if Williams is in that tier as well, too, but I think that May and Daniels are are in that same tier now. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, I took Penix at the at 110. I I I could be okay with saying taking Puka there. He's just about to you know break the rookie record for uh, receiving yards. Um, just seemingly, every, just every everything week just comes out. Just. <clears throat> yeah, he he he's been he's been outstanding. But you know, Michael Penix, I think last night has been kind of really helped his case out it's sad that he had to go out there and perform in front of everybody for everybody to kind of get behind him a little bit to stop saying he's a backup quarterback in the league 14 games but you know this year. is this is a lot of casual Penix watchers until last night where and i get it he's on the west coast it's a little later but i saw a lot of people chirping about how Penix is is down there and isn't but last night it was some of those same people were talking about all those dimes that Penix is dropping and um you know how good he is so i just call that the casual uh Penix people I've been it's only been two years he's been doing the same thing he's he's got uh he's got like a hundred percent with stats that's uh walk it what what, what, what were we going to him well what do we have going last night uh he leads the league and couldn't have walked walked it to him yeah uh any yeah. better so that's that's a hundred percent in the with stat category yeah uh walk it to him any better but that's how you can describe a lot of these Penix throws man it's just like you couldn't have walked it to the receiver and put it in his hands any better than Penix is dropping those balls in. and yes he has great receivers around him but so did Joe Burrow so did CJ Stroud so did Tua so did Jalen Hurts like those yeah. guys have all been fine in the league it's one thing if those guys are like you can clearly see that Penix is deficient but he is elevating their play was same thing we talked about Stroud. He's raising the tide of everything. Like Penix is certainly raising the tide of everything at Washington. And those are the kind of guys that I'll bet on. Like I just can't see how he doesn't go in the first round of the NFL draft. You know, just had a oh, great performance will. in front of everybody. I anticipate um, the line being three and a half for quarterbacks. Yeah, in yeah, the first I, round that makes sense. I, I, you know, I, there's no way I'm taking him over or, or four or four. No way I'm taking JJ McCarthy over Penix. No. No way I'm taking Bo Nix over Penix. No. The only thing, if you want to say the, the clean knee, the knee injury things, he's got that's fun. I'm telling you, that's he's, got fine. A, he's got a funky delivery, too. right? But I, you know, at, once we get to this point, I don't care what is the, like because of the results. I don't really care about the delivery. You know what I mean? And last night we got to see a little bit of scrambling around. Like his yeah. pocket presence was awesome. He was moving around really well. He picked up first downs when he needed them. He got hurt a bunch, so he, and he was a little bit more of a runner back in the day like not a runner not a not a sure not a Jaden Daniels runner but yeah. you know a Vader and can can pick up the first downs and we saw a little bit more Darth? of that yeah um so I'm sticking with Penix there um again once again that, that goes back to him over Puka is is kind of defending that pick a little bit is just basically like the state of quarterback play right now like if you're telling me like Michael Penix can't walk into the Lions and be Jared Goff I just don't I don't understand like or can't be on the Dolphins and be to it like I really don't understand that at all like if the if the Pittsburgh Steelers had uh or the or the he, we, Penix gets drafted by the Vikings are you like is the, are you not super stoked about your Justin Jeffries or or uh Jim, Je- Jim, Jim Jeffries, Jeffries. yeah, <laughs> uh, Justin Jefferson and and Addison and Hawkinson. He just walks right into that. Like he could facilitate that offense, no problem. Um, so I think there's there's a lot of key spots that need quarterbacks. Half the league needs a quarterback. I'd be okay if if you know what if the Detroit Lions just take him, you know, down there and say, well, once golf contracts out, we're just going to go with Penix. You know, I don't know. I think late a later team is going to take Penix, and it's going to be a better team that can come in and facilitate Penix kind of right away. You're just writing off Hooker. Um, 
No, I mean, I, I like Hooker a lot, but I mean, if we're gonna whoa, whoa, if we're whoa. gonna go Penix or Hooker, I'm gonna go Penix all day long. Well, sure. Um, so, anyway, uh, so that's that's my Penix spiel. Um, and then Austin, you had 111. You you got everyone's hot for your for your pick right here. You had Puka, so I think you I think you made the right decision. It would seem. Yeah, I wasn't mad about it. <laughs> um, I mean, Puka is Puka already has more scrimmage yards as a rookie, right? Single season, we're talking. Uh, over Terrell Owens in his entire career. All right, so l- let that just sink in, right? I had to actually double check that. I saw someone tweet it. I'd love to give them credit. I don't know who it, who tweeted it today. I had to Google Terrell Owens stats because I couldn't believe that it was real. And he's going to surpass him in receiving yards. Like T.O. never hit 1,500, and he's one of the all-time goats. But that's just how incredible Puka has been. He's going to break the you know single season record for receivers for and he receiving could break the yards. Cap. He could break the catch Re- record too. Yeah, receptions, correct. And um, he, yeah, he's absolutely going to break that. Um, so I, I was, ex- of course, I was ecstatic to get Puka here at 11. Uh, but I want to touch on, um, I want to touch on Michael Penix Jr. real quick, man. If you watch the film, if you watch the game the other night, oh my God, these windows were so tight, man. They were, they were really, yeah. really well defended by Texas. It didn't matter. It literally didn't matter. Like Michael Penix was throwing darts. He was just. Dude, I don't know if that was one of his best performances. Like I've oh, that's watched what he does plenty, every single week. I, I've watched plenty of his tape, but he looked like extra special, man. Like he was on, yeah. he was on something else, man. And yeah, uh, I just, talking. I was so happy to see, man, because he overcame multiple ACL tears, multiple season-ending injuries, and for him to finally get this chance and then deliver like that, dude, good for him, man. Yeah, I think he was. That was just like the fifth best. College football performance by a quarterback. Yeah, they were talking about it was Burrow, like Burrow, time. Mac Jones, and yeah, maybe all, Tua. Like all time great, like single game performance. Yeah, with that, it's, and it's that like four thirty or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Burrow had two of them in that run that he had, like in the he championship it, man. and the playoff. Oh well, he That's well, crazy. Who, who they play in that? They play Oklahoma in that Oklahoma semifinal. And then they Clemson. just tore them apart, yeah. just torched them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I I agree, and I like the Puka pick there, and then round us out at one twelve here. I uh, flipped Matt. a coin. I with I flipped a coin between the one twelve and two two one and so which were who with between Bowers and uh, yeah Laporta. So if you're Brock. mad if you're mad about it, be mad at the coin that I flipped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think you can go either way. That's you know that's kind of some of the stuff we were talking about earlier. It's do, do you take in the known or the unknown? I don't think you can necessarily go wrong. Brock's going to have the draft capital. Brock's been outstanding. I don't think he played in the in the Georgia game. Um, uh, I don't think he did. Lad McConkey I, I played, can, but. I can say I I can say I watched zero yeah. plays of that game because by the time I even remembered it was on, it was already like twenty one nothing. So yeah. I was like, I'm not turning this on. I will certainly be glad to basically have six games that mean something and we can not pay attention to any of the other bowl games next year is yeah, very these, nice. Yeah, these ans- these even it's, the New Year's six bowl games, I mean Who cares? I mean Florida State had twenty one guys yeah. opt out. They don't or, care. Or 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 that weren't the playing because they're in the portal right. or something. It was if wild. the players don't care, who cares? Like what are we doing? So, anyway, all right. Let's uh, any any big changes in the uh, seven through twelve categories, Austin. Uh, big changes or any changes? No, really. just 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 Poka being a little bit earlier. But yeah. it's it man. These were some really good picks. Yeah, yeah I, I think everybody yeah. kind of agrees that that would be fine. Yeah, I, I should have taken yeah Puka at one nine, maybe even one eight. I mean. Bird in the hand versus two in the bush with neighbors. I do agree that he's going to be tantalizing for good, sure. For sure. Yeah. But, I mean, Puka's there already. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I, I think Puka should at least been at one nine. Yeah. All right. Let's take it up at the at the two one. I got Laporta. Austin took JSN. Two three was Addison from Matt. Two four was Adunze from me. Two five was Flowers from Matt. And then two six. Here comes Tank Dell uh, with Matt. So. Um, I let off with Laporta, like you said. You flipped a coin, um, so I'm kind of right there. Would you have there. taken Bowers if I wouldn't have taken him? Yeah, okay. I was. Okay. I, I thought I was thinking about Laporta around the Penix area, but I was like, I got to take, you know, it's it's Puka, it's Penix, it's, yeah. and I was like, I'm taking the quarterback here because it's super flex, and I, I, and, some, I, and I love Penix. So for some reason, Puka wasn't even. I don't know. For some reason, wasn't even on my mind there. And I, again, well, it's it does it's it's a mock draft. It doesn't right. really matter. Right. But. Right. Where's trying to figure value out is what we're doing and seeing where these guys kind of mesh together and and how it'll change uh, over the course of the offseason 
Uh, so I took Laporta here. This is tight end premium. I know some of you people are probably upset about any of the tight ends being taken here, um, unless it was two point. But look, if at one point five per tight end reception here, um, that would basically be good for wide receiver. The top five tight ends, one through five, were as good as wide receiver nine through thirteen. So in getting five of the top tight ends, you're you're basically getting at, at, on this year, and that changes every year. Um, you, you got wide receivers nine through 13, essentially in points wise, not points per game, but points, overall points. Now, TJ Hawkinson missed this last game. He was averaging 17. If you put his 17 in, he comes in at wide receiver five on the year. Um, so that's why in tight end premium, I'm always okay with taking these shots because it does fucking matter. Yeah. And tight ends are getting volume now and tight ends are more like receivers now. Yeah. So I will continue to take those shots. Laporta's proven, like you said, it's kind of the bird in the hand kind of yeah. deal. Uh, but, and, and then you had some other tight ends at the end of the season, like McBride, who would have been higher up, had things, you know, he would have been in that top five. So you would have had six tight ends. And then you throw Joku, who's having a hell of a back end here. He might have even snuck in there. And then you have likely at the end of this season yeah. uh, who put up crazy, you know, probably wide receiver one numbers for, for a few weeks in a row. Um, and Schultz in the middle of the season had wide receiver one numbers. Um, Goddard injury uh, or yeah. was injured there for four four weeks so he was a little lower than normal so yeah, we I have think, a lot I of tight ends the thing with tight ends is this year as i think we've i think we've seen an expansion of those because before it was like if you didn't get if you didn't have like kelsey, right. and, and, andrews was injured if you didn't have kelsey andrews or kittle you're like why bother right i'm just gonna punt and that, and that was my thought process waller now, for a year or two yeah. there was but now i feel like it's Lockett. kind of expanded uh -huh. a little bit where <laughs> The, the 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 NFL has realized that these some of these these tight ends are mismatches where right. they're they're too big for safeties and they're 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 too big for corners and they're too fast for safeties. Right. So too fast for linebackers. Yeah, too, too fast for linebackers for yeah. sure. Yeah. Most linebackers anyway. Not not yeah. Fred Warner, but <laughs> I, I, he's I got him on my IDP team. So um, all good. But yeah, so that's kind of where my love and affinity for tight ends come in. If I'm doing a tight end premium draft and it falls right, I'm going to continue to hammer them. But yeah, man, I, tight end, just, just to give you where that all finished this year, I think that's a good zoom out of kind of why I think they're important and why I'll, I'll keep hammering them and, and why I'd find with Brock or Laporta there. Um, and, you know, we'll get to Kincaid here at one point, and it's the same theory. How much does 1.75 or 2 move up? Brock and Laporta I mean if you get to two I think it moves him up to you know probably look we're at we're at wide receiver nine through 13 with those five you, you give everybody another two half, half a point, point for yeah. everything you're yeah. damn near you're up in the top five probably with a lot of those guys yeah um so I think you gotta you'd probably move that all the way up to the the Gibbs May area right yeah, I mean for sure I think um so and in and, and, and two, when I get to two, like me and Big Co have a team, we haven't been able to stay healthy, uh, but we where it's t two two points for tight ends. And we, we, we start like four or five every week. And yeah. it's you know, it's fucking hard to beat because they don't even need to have a bunch of catches to put up 15. And if they score a touchdown, forget it. Uh, and then guys like hot, the, the big volume guys, it's like that's 20 points every week. It's crazy. So, yeah, I took I took Laporta there uh, over to Austin at JSN for two two. Yeah, I was uh, I was very happy to land JSN here. Um, I mean, look, man, he's a he's a player who, if you drafted JSN, feels like you just want to hold, right? You, you you absolutely don't want to sell, even though he still has a lot of value. I would argue his value is down, right? I remember yeah. people were were you know trading up to get to like the 102, 103 range last year in dynasty rookie drafts, and they were spending like two firsts and change like two firsts in a second just to move up a few slots to land JSN over to guys like Zay Flowers or Jordan Addison and like that's been a terrible uh so far that's been terrible right because all three of those players look very good they look like they have promising careers um but I'm I'm still again diamond hands holding tight um, I'm happy to get JSN here I think he's just going to go on to have a very good career in the NFL Tyler Lockett we're finally seeing him on the decline yeah. and I'm yeah, not sure how <laughs> yeah I'm not sure what Tyler Lockett's career uh, what his future looks like I'm not sure what Geno Smith's future looks like I hope he's out uh, I am very low on Geno man I want no part of him I'm excited for Seattle to finally whether it's one or two years down the road get a new quarterback and just roll out DK Metcalf every single week with Ty with JSN I think I, and of course Ken Walker man like that Seattle offense 
can be more efficient. It can be better. Uh, I'm I'm just excited, man. I think see I think it's I think Seattle is only going to get better as as an offensive unit moving forward once yeah. they depart from Gino. No, and right? don't forget Zachary Chabonnet. Yeah, and, and yeah. I mean you know you lose every team in the league when when you have an ascension of a position coach. They lost Waldron. Yeah. Who. Got Gino, or seemingly got Gino to where he is, and now he's doing the same thing with Baker. So, not everybody has this built-in system. You know, some teams lose coordinators every year, and it doesn't seem like anything happened. The Eagles right now, their record's pretty good, but it seems like they're hurting for those two. Steichen's over there having a great year with the Colts. Gannon just came to town and beat him. The Cardinals yeah. aren't any good, but they're in every game. They're yeah, you know they're, they're deep. F- such a fun team, though. such a fun team. Right. To watch. Uh, so you know every you know Waldron's out of there. So Gino maybe regresses a little bit. The line got hurt to start off with. They're, they're building yeah. the, through, through the trenches a little bit. Defense took a little bit of a step back. They're pretty good. First couple games at least run stuff, and then the graphic that you saw this last game terrible. Um, they've been, but JSN man, it's one of those guys <clears throat> where. I think if if you are this quickly out on a guy, what what did you spend all the time evaluating these prospects? Like if you're not going to bank on your process of the like you just and how did you not if you're if you were eager to draft JSN because of what he was, you had to know the situation that he was walking into. Like yeah. Tyler Lockett is a bona fide veteran stud who just keeps going and DK is DK, um, you know, so and, and we have like you said, Austin, we've seen. At least JSN get on the field. There was multiple touchdowns that could have even happened with JSN over the last couple of weeks. So I th- I said I say don't get don't get bummed out about JSN. We're just seeing the the tip of the iceberg here. I mean shit. Look at look at CD Lamb. Not that he came in and was anywhere where JSN was, but like we were wanting him to be the top guy. And right now we're like oh all of a sudden CD is yeah. is what what CD was uh, yeah. or what we thought he was. Um, because of scheme and usage and quarterback play and moving yeah. them around all, all over the place. And, you know, I, I think that's, you know, I think that's an outcome for JSN is CD lamb. Yeah. Um, so not that they're the same. I'm just saying like he could be that good um, of crushing. So anyway, um, Matt Addison there at two, three, I, I thought this was a little questionable. You know, you like this big D doesn't like it. I feel like there's enough there in Minnesota where, Addison can be that the two behind Jefferson and it can be what we've seen in Cincinnati where I don't know where Dunze ends up at where Mm -hmm. if he's going to get that if he's I mean Addison's never going to never going to get that never going to get the top corner he's never going to get a top corner playing against him with right with Jefferson on the field now they could obviously just stay stay on their own sides Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I was deciding. I decided pretty hard. I was going back and forth between Addison and Adunze there, and I just took the bird in the hand versus. I took the I took the known versus the unknown. That was literally all it was. Was just taking. I've seen Addison do mm-hmm. it. I haven't seen Adunze do it. And yeah, that was all. That was literally the only thing that was that was the diff- differentiator right there. The flashes of Addison have been really high end. And yeah, then, but we've had some stinkers, and obviously the, it didn't work out for what the Vikings were planning. Well, their on doing quarterback this year. situation right. has been right. a, just a mess. And Jefferson's been Cousins in and hurt. out. Yeah, um, so you know a little bit of a mess of a year. So okay. All right, well, I took a Dunze there at 2-4. Obviously, I, I, I gave some Penix love. I've been watching the Huskies all the last two years. Dunze's awesome. Um, I think he is – I know everybody likes to just say it's Marvin Harrison Jr. and then Neighbors isn't far behind. Well, I don't think a Dunze is that far behind either one of those Probably guys either. Probably a top 15 pick, too. Um, so I, I, that's that's how much I like him. And then, you know, I thought the other the other guy here who's a little further down who I was, you know, thought that maybe could be up here was, was Achan. Um, yeah. Achu, A chain, however you want to go with it. To get him where I got him. But I, I, I thought that here I started thinking about him, and then I kind of skipped him on another pick too. So, be interesting to see where he he ends up, and then maybe where where we think he may have, have should have vaulted up here. Uh, Austin, you went you went Zay Flowers on the next pick. Uh, thoughts, quick thoughts there. Yep, uh, I got sniped like one or two times prior to this pick, and I was just <laughs> I was at a point. I was really hoping Rome would fall to me, right? Rome, I have him as my dynasty wide receiver 23 to show you how early to show you how high Casey I know you're high in Rome I might be even higher man like I have I have Rome uh, just in front of Zay Zay is my wide receiver 24 in my dynasty rankings but uh, it felt right here man I love what Lamar's doing just not all I know and and Lamar has not necessarily been thriving statistically right like he did in his uh his uh campaign where he'd won the MVP right he looked like 
unbelievable that season. But this year, he also looks unreal just in a different way, right? Like you have to actually visualize and watch the games, watch the film mm-hmm. again, right? The Even though they just dropped 56 points, right? This was one of the few games where like he actually went off for fantasy purposes, right? He's just been a lot more valuable finally for NFL purposes. And I love that he signed to a long-term deal, Lamar that is, right? I love that for Zay, right? And and as big of a Rashad Bateman fan as I was and Maybe I still am. I, I, I'll just take, I'll just take the L. I know he's not going to be with him, man. (laughs) I I know that uh, he's not going to be what I wanted him to be. And, and OBJ, I don't know how much longer he's got, man. And, and only one, only this is it from Baltimore. I would have seen. I know. I know. It just been fun this year. He has been, he he has been, but the point I'm getting at is, man, it's, it's, it's Zay's, you know, it's Zay is going to be the guy, right? Of course, they have Mark Andrews. I'm just talking about the wideouts. Like, Zay is going to be the one for the foreseeable future. That's why they drafted him in the first. If they felt confident with their receiving corp, that, you know, they wouldn't have spent first round draft capital on a receiver, but yeah. they clearly didn't. Their actions speak louder than words. They wanted Zay, they got him, and he's. He's looking the part, man. Yeah, and as as that relationship goes forward and buds, I, I feel he feels like the perfect complement to to a Lamar Jackson, right? Well, I think the name that you guys haven't talked about yet is Todd Monken. I think yeah. he's kind yeah. of transformed that offense. Finally. Only twenty one passes pass attempts, I think this this week for Lamar, and just blew it up. Well, yeah, I mean Zay With, had that in Zay that, had in that, that seven, offense. Yeah. Zay had what a sixty yard touchdown yeah. reception on a Dolphins play, and um, uh, yeah, and then uh, OBJ had a had a long. Had a long uh, reception as well, too. So, yeah, I think what Bunkin has done there has been uh, a godsend for that whole offense. Finally get under uh, underneath the um, – uh, what the hell's uh, – uh, Roman. Oh, uh, Greg uh, Roman. Greg Roman. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, he won the MVP under Roman was awesome, but that offense always gets stale as we talk about it. Seems yeah. I think it's good for development, the developmental purposes for the younger running well, it, quarterback. It's good for the whole offense then, as a whole, not just right, Lamar. Right, and then as as never really evolves. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we got Zay there, and then you took Tank Dell to wrap this two six up here. I didn't know what to do here. I probably should have taken H A chain over Dell, but I was fine taking Dell here. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's getting a lot of love. I still think he's the wide receiver two in Houston, but a very good wide receiver two in Houston. Um, so he's different. They're both very different players right. for sure. So, um, but I felt that I could have even taken Kincaid here as well too. But um, yeah. I was just trying something out. You know what I mean? See how it feels. Yeah. This is a, this is why we do it. You yeah. know what I mean? For sure. You gotta you gotta you know you want to have protected sex before you're ready to you know. Make sure that this is the one you're going to settle down with. Yeah, you know, so you got to keep the condom on for for a little while, or at least be practicing birth control and a good pullout game. <laughs> there it is. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think for me, for the big changes through two one through two six, would probably my biggest one would probably be Adunze over Addison for me personally. Um, I think you could. I've taken a in my defense, I've taken a Dunze in every single rookie mock we've done thus yeah. far. I've, or, or I have um, one or the other. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, no, no, that's just one, it's a one, one, one yeah. man swap. And I mean, at this point, Addison, uh, Dunze or JSN is, is kind of 50, 50 to me, but I, it's not because I don't like JSN. It's because I like a Dunze that much. Austin, I saw a take on Twitter the other day that said that someone said that they'd rather have uh Rashi rice over JSN. How, what are your thoughts on that? Oh man, that's uh. I'm actually gonna pull up my rankings. I, I'm like genuinely kind of curious redraft, where I ha- uh, where I have yeah. those two be- because that's so close. Um, I think I have them neck and neck. I have. Is it that close? Oh, for you? I, I, it they're uh, so I have Rashi Rice as my wide receiver 18. I was toying with him at like 21, 20 range. And I was like, no man, I I'm putting Rashi at 18, and I have JSN at 22. It's really close. It is very, very close. So you right? take Rice. Ask, ask me in six months. I might give you a different answer. Ask me tomorrow. I might so give you, you a different take answer. Rice over JSN right now. Correct. Okay. Yes, I I think Rashi is legit. I I mean he's been the best not only receiver but weapon over Travis Kelsey in Kansas City. So yeah, we did this mock a few like a, a week or two ago before you did those. So mm-hmm. you would swap. You took JSN at two two, and then Rashi Rice's spoiler alert at the at the two eleven from your pick. So you would switch those two, or maybe not switch those two, <laughs> I, but you would. Yeah. You would have to. I, I don't think you have to take. 
You don't have to in a in a startup. I don't think. I don't. We can, well, we can check that out. Um, but who do you think is worth more? Do you think that you could get more for yes. JSN? Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. the draft. Do you think? Well, so? I think. I think it's. There's probably a yeah. few guys in the That's league who who bias man. Yeah, I think there's probably a few guys. It depends on who you're talking to, but I think there's a few mm-hmm. guys in the league who like Rice because of production right now. Because you know a lot of people are on that redraft. Yeah. Like Dynasty turns into redraft real quick with a lot of people without patience. Um, so. Um, I'm still JSN over over Rice. It's just having some patience. I just think he's a, he's a much better player, um, and the ceiling is is unlimited. I th- I think um, the I think the, the Kansas City Chiefs add somebody, which I think would be good is good for Rice. I think they need somebody else there, but um, you know I don't I can't see uh, the Kansas City Chiefs coming out of this draft with at least one big time receiver. I'm not curious where they two. went in that most recent stuff um, we so, did. I'm looking now. Um, yeah, I, I could see Rashi Rice coming in here or or Jaden Reed coming in here at some point and, and overtaking some of these guys. Um, but Love Jaden Reed. JSN went 5-8 and Rashi Rice went 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, so decent gap there, but I also think that, that that's a little Rice shade. Rice should be up a little higher there. This was also almost a month ago now, too. Right, so. right. Um, all right, so any, any big moves for uh, Austin that I ask you that? Um, I, I want to touch on two Rashi players Rice real up. quick. Um, yeah, that, correct. I, I would do that. Uh, but the other thing I want to touch on is Laporta versus Brock. This is like totally valid. I understand both sides. I would rather Laporta over Brock in all formats. Um, it again, very, very close. I, I fully understand both argument, both sides, you know, uh, but here's what I'll say about Brock Bowers for the people listening that don't know a whole lot about him. This is how good of a prospect Brock Bowers is. He's six, four, he's two thirty, twenty-one 21 years old. He in the entire PFF college era, Bowers ranks first in career PFF receiving grade, first in career receiving yards, first in receiving yak, first in forced missed tackles, and tied first in receiving touchdowns. So I understand the argument for Brock over Laporta. I get it, and I'm cool with it, but I do prefer Laporta. But uh, we're, I mean, dude, we're talking about two top four dynasty tight ends in my rankings. Like these, the, the dynasty tight end landscape got so much more appealing over the past year it's mm-hmm. amazing yeah, it's sure. amazing for sure for sure how about so, that that two six for you for tank Dell? would you swap rice for dell or you or pretty even i think or or still tank a little over rice i think i'd probably take rice over dell mm. um just because i'd rather have nico over dell so mm, okay all right let's keep it moving here in the eyes of time uh let's go uh two seven i took dalton kincaid at two eight, you took Travion or Austin took Travion Henderson. Hopefully that he comes out. It's kind of a bit of a mystery right now. We'll find out in thirteen days. Um, two nine, our guy Achan, Devon Achan, Achan, A chain, the running back Achoo. from Miami. Uh, yeah, get mad in the comments. Uh, then Egbuka, <laughs> Rashi Rice, and Bryce Young to round us out at two twelve. So no Jaden Reed in here, which I think you could make an argument anywhere in the second round. You probably could have thrown him in there, and then you know us um, we didn't see. Who? <laughs> Quentin Johnston. No, no Quentin Johnston. No Sharbs. I mean, no we, Mingo. I mean, we only had what three running backs taken. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it just speaks to some of the some of this class. You know how good the yeah. wide receivers, tight ends are. Um, so I, I picked up at, at two seven there. That was basically the same conversation we're having with Brock and Laporta of why I'm taking tight end premium. Yeah. Kincaid had a stretch there that was that was really really solid. Definitely, Target hog definitely cooled off here. Down uh, the stretch. Cooled off. Knox came back, which I'm, Knox has got a contract with them, which is weird. I'm not really sure why they did that, but that was a little before Kincaid, I, I believe. Um, so I don't love that, but I think Kincaid's a really really good player. There, you know, Gabe Davis is a free agent. They don't really have a whole lot going on there in the wide receiver department. And Stephon Diggs seems always on some other shit uh, and, and, and seemingly upset. So you know the who is their wide receivers there seems like it could be a big mix up. And I think Kincaid can can be uh, you know just watching the games. Kincaid can be a nice safety valve. Uh, with a with a ton of of volume um, and a and a nice red zone threat, so still sticking with Kincaid, but it's definitely Laporta over Kincaid from you know For Laporta sure. winning that battle uh, in the the off season, keeping those guys kind of close to each other. No Michael Mayer. I was just going to say, I think he's still kind of a buy for me. I still like Mayer a lot, uh, but not making this list. Um, and then so. When I took Kincaid here, I was thinking thinking Rashi Rice. Uh, so, so, you know, obviously we're going every three picks. 
So, you know, I, I don't I would I could be fine with rice up there with the Zay Flowers and the and the Dells and the Kincaid here, but I, I stuck with the tight ends and the tight end premium setting. Um, but you know, what fine about, with taking rice here. What about uh oh never mind. Or Jaden Reed that was really last year's class term, but carry Yeah. On. Um so Austin, you took uh Travion Henderson, one of our, you know, four running backs taken five I think was it five running backs or four running backs? Four, four running backs. Four. One of our four running backs taken. So you take Henderson over uh Devon. Yep. I feel great about it, man. I'm starting to get lower on Devon HN. Uh, with all due respect, I know his upside is unbelievable, but uh, dude, uh, it's getting to me. I don't know if it's recency bias. It's kind of getting to me, man. I <laughs> left a sour taste in my mouth, you know, the final, what, eight weeks of the season. It, it was tough, man. It, was, it, it wasn't quite as appealing, um, but I feel... I don't think people are going to argue with me on this, but if, you know, Trevion Henderson does come out, feel safer, right? Do you, would you guys agree? Would you feel safer like with Travion, the hell? I like Trevion a lot. So, right. I, you know. I'm with you, right? I'm, uh, he's going to be yeah. the clear RB1 in the 2024 class. Sizes, if he, though. You're definitely a size queen. I am. I am. Yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, I, come chain, on. I mean, I chain's banged up every week. I, I, I can't, I can't arg- make a strong argument against that. I can't. I really can't. He is. No. What What did you have, Austin? Look like you were. I was just going to say, up. man. Like, like he's he was a five star recruit. He was tre- that Trevion Henderson. That is uh, fifteen hundred and sixty seven total yards, nineteen touchdowns in thirteen games as a true freshman. Right to do that against the best colleges, the best defenses in the nation. Right, like that doesn't happen on accident, man. He's he's going to be a top ten dynasty running back the second he steps foot on an NFL field. You 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 better believe that. Yeah, but can he add an apostrophe and change his first name in the off season? That's the question. I mean, I mean, he could, I mean he could take he one. Could. Away. He's already got one, so he could take <laughs> yeah, it away. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> he I could. So. Uh, I could. I could text him if you want. <laughs> So Travion, you, you took. I, th- I think this was maybe the best value of the draft right here. Yeah, I here. just took up this pure upside at two nine. At two nine, with with Achain. Yeah, yeah, just 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 upside here. Yeah, I like I like that. And then I came back and and took Egbuka, which I I I, I can't say is I'm I'm over the moon with him. I think he's I think he's pretty good. I'm probably maybe a little down on him more, but more, I haven't dove dove into everybody, and so I could could get back up. But I should have taken Rice. Yeah, over probably. Igbuka, and yeah. I would have actually been okay taking Reed over Igbuka right now. The thing with Reed, Jaden Reed, that is, is you know, we haven't seen Christian Watson in this offense. It's the first year of Jordan Love being in charge of this offense. You know, Romeo seems to have a role. Wick seems to have a role. They got two. You know, all of a sudden, Crafts. You know, which is kind of what we alluded to. We thought Kraft might take this job because he looks more ready. Well, he's on the field and he's been way more effective than Musgrave. Not that Musgrave yeah. is isn't the freak, but now they have. Two, t- two more, you know, so there could be some yeah. target competition in Reed's future, well, especially for Reed, who's definitely a slot player. Right. And, and they, they they but they do do a good job of kind of featuring yeah. him and giving him his set of plays for sure, at least right for, now. For sure. When he's on the field, he's getting targeted. Yeah. Um, so definitely, def- definitely one of my misses. Yeah. I, well, speaking of I didn't think I'm pretty sure we went 100 percent on all targets and I won every single league that I'm in. So, I mean, that's why <laughs> we keep it 100 on this show. So we're always 100 percent. That's really, you know, just 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 being transparent. I mean, I right? did go you four. Know? I did go four and I with this past week. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do this show for a living and because I make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in fantasy because <laughs> I never lose. So, I mean, there we go. Transparency, yeah. baby. Yeah. I thought I was the only one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for real. All right. So Austin, you, you took Rashi here. Yep. I have a, I have Rashi as my wide receiver 18 in my dynasty rankings. Uh, what's not to like, man. I, I, again, I don't want it to sound like recency bias is getting to me a little too much, but you know, he's going to be the fo- a focal point of that offense, right? You know, he's going to be a vital asset moving forward for the Kansas City Chiefs. Of course, Patrick Mahomes is, is not going anywhere anytime soon, man. And, and neither is Rashi, right? He just finished or sorry, he's about to finish his rookie campaign. He's got another three years under contract. You know, they prioritized him clearly second round draft pick. Clearly, they weren't happy with Sky Moore. They weren't happy with Kadarius Tony, Marcus Valdez scaling. Shocker, right? Who would have thought? But here, here we are. Second round, Brett Veach pulls trigger. Kansas City's GM pulls trigger on um, Rashi Rice, and you know looks like one one of his best draft picks in, in you know in some time. Yeah, and they then they needed it, and it was it was you know the 
targets per route run and all that stuff were, were super high. Um, and, and all the all the good advanced metrics were telling you that Rashi should be on the field more. And lo and behold, he you know, a little slow in the beginning of the season. But since they've kind of added him to be a little bit more consistently on the field, it's been fantastic for your fantasy lineup every single week. He's You just can't even bench him. I mean, I would rather play Rashi Rice than Zay Flowers right now on a weekly basis. Um, just it feels a lot safer. Not that I and I love Zay Flowers, huge Zay Flowers, you know, want to smash that one. That's in our hundred percent. Um, but you know, Zay Zay has just been a little up and down. Now the last two weeks in your playoffs, Zay's been awesome. Um, but you know, before that there was some single digits from Zay there when he started off with a bunch of double digits. So a little hot and cold where Rice has kind of gone the opposite way. Not a whole lot to start off, couple couple of good games and then just rock solid uh through the back half of the season. Uh, just really, really, really crushing it. So Rice seems to be arrow pointing straight up for him. Uh, I think he does get a little target competition moving forward, but that's okay. Yeah. Like they, they, they clearly need somebody else. They got the best quarterback in the league. They're they're not a team who wants to line up and run in a ton anyway. So we know we're going to be in the higher attempt thresholds, you know, most of the time. And, and Rice being in there, getting in the uh, the circle of trust with with uh, Andy and and Mahomes is is going to be good. And and how how like Travis Kelsey looks like. We finally may have started to see he's distracted. a, sl- a he's slight dis- di- decline with, with Kelsey. So. He's distracted. Well, he needs somebody else to be his, his uh, partner in crime going out chugging beers with, and maybe Rashi's that guy. Um, so I like that pick. I think, I think, that's, I think A-Chain and, and uh, Rice have been really, really good values, misvalued here. And then last pick, you went Bryce Young. So th- some people might be down, but any – any rationale other than just the quarterback or I just, just think that whole just situation whole, yeah. this year was just a mess. I don't the, I mean, the whole team is a mess. I mean, we were talking about before we got on here with with the Tepper situation. But uh, I mean, that whole situation is a mess. So I'm just not going to give up already from a guy who was just drafted the first overall pick. I think there's been some 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 brighter spots, not large spots, but I think we've seen some bright some some signs of encouragement i mean he doesn't he's gonna have a brand new coaching staff coming in here next year so i mean they're gonna have to bring an offensive minded head coach yeah to try to bring him along so i'm not gonna give up already in it 212 for a guy you were taking at probably taking at one two one three last year yeah i mean and, and he's 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 if you're watching some of the games he does have good Talk, sections in games he could use some weapons too for sure i mean could use some weapons the offensive line has taken a huge step back yeah well, he's, well we thought it was gonna be a strong point this year right. has been has been, he's, has been but he's, he's been he's always been a good escape artist not necessarily a runner but he's been out there running for his life um so i think if you could get him some protection and and a non-35 year old uh white guy uh you know not no no shade on adam thielen and you know the all white team that that everybody's been talking about but uh, you know the rams have most of the good all whites uh, as far as receivers go um that not that Thielen was there but he's probably declined a little bit know, does puka does puka count i don't know does he who knows it's a, he gets to decide i guess <laughs> um all right uh any any big changes here at the end from from Kincaid to to young for you uh austin obviously we we all like rice being up a good bit maybe um anything else yeah, that's about it, man. I just want to say Bryce Young at the 212. I'm still I'm not like 100% out on Bryce Young, right? I, I'm not I'm not out on him. I am lower, of course, you know, a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm rooting for him, man. I want to see Bryce Young prove everybody wrong. I want to see him I just want to see him play good ball. I want to see him turn that franchise around. Uh, just it, it, there Carolina is a mess, man. Well, yeah, they're such a mess. Right? I mean, just, they don't first round pick next year either. And now their owner got fined. He doesn't have any more money. He's going <laughs> to probably have to get a second job. Poverty franchise. $15. Yeah, it's tough, 30 man. Cents. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I'm just, I'm rooting yeah. for Bryce Young. That's all I got to say. All right. You got anything? Uh, no, I think, yeah, I think, I think we talked about everything that we yeah. thought we would, we would go back and redo. So, I mean, just kind of judging by this a little bit, it seems, you know, and I, I think maybe we misvalue, you know, just, it kind of happens when you're doing these things. Somebody gets pushed down and if you redid it, maybe... Maybe Rice and Achan would be a chain would be you know a little higher. So maybe that, that could be a some people have a you know maybe there could be some value still. Yeah, for those guys if you want to go look at them and, and Jaden Reed. I was just gonna say Jaden Reed too as well. Um, so uh, and any you know we, we 
Quentin Johnston, and then there's a you know a whole bunch of guys coming into this year that maybe will eventually could could supersede some of these guys by the end of the off season. Yeah, I think I'd rather take the shot on Keon Coleman. I'd rather take the shot on uh, some of these other later round first round wide receivers than than messing with Quentin Johnson. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. All right, uh, Austin, where can we catch your rankings and, and all that other stuff? Uh, yeah, on Twitter, at Austin Abbott FF. I spend 26 hours a day on Twitter, so <laughs> if you guys are free, shoot me a DM. I'd love to talk ball. But, yeah, I just I just dropped 2024 Dynasty startup rankings with rookies included, top 225 picks, one quarterback, uh, top 40 rookies, my links in my bio and tomorrow. So by the time you guys listen, it's, it's going to be out, but by tomorrow night, I will be releasing the super flex version. So at Austin Abbott FF. Yep. That's uh that's all I got fellas. And of course, uh, be sure to like subscribe, comment below. If you're on the podcast, five star review on the tubes, uh, you know, any comments that make you angry, get at me dog. Um, get mad in the uh, comments. Shout out to uh, team pup and suds. Jason didn't think anybody had seen Brink, but a lot of people what? have seen Brink. Oh, what? You weren't. He was killing me. He was like, nobody's seen that movie. It sucks. And I was like, oh, buddy, that, that's, that's like time. a That's like a top five Disney Channel original movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just skate better. Team Pup and Suds. Let's go. Shout out to, to the comments on that one. We appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace.